10 years. Show yeah. some alive. Yeah, it's been 10 years now. Mm, mm. Tell me something. Tell me something. Tell me how did you meet me? Um, it was 2007 after I was fired from the Black Spirits. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she was supposed to go on tour of Europe. And uh, this time they asked her to come with a full band. Because mm. usually we went with just an acoustic uh, setup of just three people. Mm. So she heard about the news and then she spoke to Josh Mack. Josh Mack was a music director at the time. Mm. Mm. So she just asked him, uh, Monan of my to go with me on tour. Then Josh had my number, they called me. So that's when we started working together. But when I come down, I am going to go to Havara. These are the gems. Come to the Tower of Zimbabwe music. These are the gems. Mm. What was it like working with her? Um, Chioniso was fantastic because uh, even when it comes to money, if you agree on a figure, she will even pay you more. And uh, <laughs> she was not the type of a boss who wanted to be feared. My Karam So, what he told is. Um, if you have chemistry off stage, the moment you go on stage, you don't struggle to have chemistry. Yeah, because my guitar is at chance of fear, because I'm not going to be able to get inspiration. So. Yeah, so I'm going to be able to get fear, man. I'm going to be able to get You know what? Mm. I, I, I think that as, as musicians, we we'll learn. I'm yeah. also a musician. People don't know that, but I'm also a musician. Yeah, people must know. People must know. You know what I mean? Try for them, who knows? But you know, one of the things um, is learning, learning from each other. Yeah, true. And and maybe you could just share my own nuggets on that. I would even just ah, I'm not the one that's showing it to her. I learned this, I learned that. Try for me, so try that, try that. Talk to me. Yeah, there was a lot to learn. Because one thing that I really liked about uh, Chioniso's life is uh, she was born in the States, mm -hmm. and, uh, in Washington. And uh, she grew up there, the first stages of her life, and uh, went to school there and came to Zimbabwe much later. Mm -hmm. But she came in speaking Shona fluently. She knew everything about Zimbabwean culture. She could play the mbira, she could play all the ancient songs, which is a good thing about uh, the way she was raised. These days, most parents are just maintaining children. They're not raising children. I'm done. Um, <laughs> you say it again, bro. Say yeah, it again. They just give them what they want. They just buy them everything that they want, but they don't impact my, my values. So that's not uh, raising children. That's maintaining children. So Chunis was very well raised. Because even the she was the, 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 the kindest person, she would even feed my street kids from her house. Why do you say that I'm a street kids? Now, there, there is something that I, I always used to wonder. Vocal training, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. This is, this is, this is the investment that was made. Because you see, when you hear the, the name Marai, it's a family of musicians. So, yeah, it is. is it ingrown? Can I tell you a special training? Yeah, Kaita, would you know? Um, what I know is uh, she, she was trained by her father because her father was a musician. She was, um, the father was a bitter player and a music teacher. Mm. So, she got a training from home. Was, uh, even by, I think by age nine, she was in the studio already. If you remember the song, Was that Chioniso? That was Chioniso, yeah. Ah. Honest. She, she started playing um, music so I think that's how she got a training because anything that you start early you you flourish on but so she started very early on uh, with the guidance of her father so um, it was easy. That's why she was that polished. The one thing that you will always remember Chuoni so for, as we conclude. Mm, he love for her country and music, and uh, we are most likely to be celebrable outside Zimbabwe if you sound Zimbabwean. One. Ah, say it again, say it again. 
I said you are most likely to be sellable outside Zimbabwe if you sound Zimbabwean because they've got Afrobeats who are around. I'm a piano and I would dare, a Beyonce and I would dare, they don't want another Beyonce. I know that these days, I think you're a music industry, Kusina Mass Structures, Kusina Marigold Labels, I pack items. So a lot of people have got the idea or the thinking for you to make a breakthrough, you need to copy Nigerians, you need to copy South Africans, you need to copy um, Jamaicans. But if you notice, all the people or all the artists that do those genres, Kanoj Kwirandi, Gorungo Nodiz, Rama Zimbabweans. But with Shonis, I told with Shonis, so 2007, 2008, no, 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 Hey. Europe is something intended as the States is something intended as the boys. We are bringing something new, unique, something it's unique. Zimbabwe because side. nothing sells in the music industry more than being unique. Uniqueness and sells. Original. Uniqueness is your superpower. Go on. Five Monomukun, one of the most celebrated in this land. He's a music producer, instrumentalist, words of wisdom. And today, as we commemorate and uh, remember the life of Choni Somarire. Thank you for joining us. And we appreciate you and the wise words that you've shared. Thank you very much. <laughs> Monroe Sophie! <laughs> blaz or blaz? <laughs> yeah. Ten years. Yeah. She only summarized it. Rest in peace. What is that? Well, it's monosophical. It is what it is. We say it like it's 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 like it